All right, so here's the plan to replace the spark plugs in this here car. Um, so apparently you need one of these because pulling on those plugs is quite a deal. I already pulled one out. Yeah, there's a there's a big suction holding those in, so it's it's a pain in the ass. Um, I'm sure there's other ways around it. Maybe like a hanger wire. I could see a hanger wire in a loop and pulling up. Could do it. Um, I don't know if this piece needs to come up to make it easier. Eh, maybe not. Anyway, so I got six double iridiums. 7431s. Double iridium. Gosh. This car's got 150 something miles on it. 150,000. I'm pretty sure it's probably the same plugs. Because the owner did what most Richie Riches do get rid of the car as soon as it's at the warranty edge. So they don't have to replace plugs. Because, you know, plugs are so expensive. You know, Bosch, $7 off. Total $65. Auto zone. So expensive. Um, so I'm going to use this. This is the one I use for my Crown Vic, which the 4.8 liter engine has deep sockets like this one. Uh, you see the size, 5 eighths, whatever, 4.5 inch long. Um, yeah, your extension's on there. Um, uh, I'll use this puppy to get the. These are things people have that have been working on cars a long time. You got a form control. So anyway, you got to put this. Uh, let's see, is that the right way? Is that lifting it away? Ah, oh, crap. That light's not lighting up good. Where's my other light? You got to get that. Come on, buddy. You gotta get that lip inside that little hole. Uh, inside that hole there, you gotta get that lip to release. You gotta get that to pull forward like that. I mean, I suppose this would work. Well, it's kind of easier to just use this top. So that's a cheat. That's a cheater. These have to pull up. This one I had already pulled up, so it's not as tight. Uh, but the puller, uh, the puller grabs here like that and pulls up on it. See how it fits in there perfectly. So obviously we need those top parts off. Pull this up. That pulls out. Yeah, we got some oh wait, I don't know if that's is there a seal right there? I don't know if that's a rubber. A lot of cars have rubber seals right there. Yeah, that's a rubber. So hopefully that's not leaking on any of the other cylinders. Because what happens is that upper rubber seal starts leaking then you get oil down on the cylinder it looks okay down there looks like there's a little bit but generally it's pretty clean I don't know if I'm gonna blow that out in there you see a little dribble down the side eh. that's all right all right so It will take two hands to get this next one off. Where is the thing? Uh, yes, I have a chair. All right, so. And there 
there goes my light. Hey, buddy. That's the best thing about this car is that thing that's down below there. Doesn't let anything fall to the ground. Right. I'm going to turn this off so I can reach down there for that. All right. Um, yeah, I was demonstrating that wrong. To get this to loose, sorry, to get this loose, you put that in there like that and bend like that. That's what gets that to go. You don't go down in here. No, that's wrong. You go in here and push like that to make the lower thing go down. Uh, so I don't know if I can get in here. I have to figure that out. <sighs> oh, that was, that was not tight at all. And this spark plug socket has the rubber grommet on it, so it'll pull the plug out with it. It doesn't look that bad, actually. Come on. Focus on the tip, buddy. Flipping around. It doesn't look all that bad. Maybe these plugs were replaced. Normally you would see. Um, all right, so the electro would looks okay. I don't know, I'm gonna compare it with the other one. You would see this metal all burned away. If these things had 150,000 on them, this thing would be like half eaten away here. Let's check out one of the other ones. Oh, there's got to be somewhere. Here's the other one, double platinum. gaps look <laughs> all right so the gap is smaller maybe maybe some of the metal is eaten away all right of course almost 
of the split plug. You want to make sure the threads and everything are the same deep, just to be sure. And let's see what's in this thing, even. Oh, NGK, IRs, LILZKRT78. So I'm going to guess that these were replaced, maybe at 100,000. I don't think an NGK is what comes with an Audi, but this guy only let the Audi work on his cars. Although, maybe not. Alright, there's nothing on these threads. Alright, so that's one out. I'm not going to videotape putting it in. That, that plug was pretty loose. I wonder what the torque specs are on these. <coughs> Alright. Alright, I found an easier way to release these. Maybe... People already know this. You don't need to pry that switch at all. Kind of weird. I guess this is actually a, the only good design I've seen with Audi. I mean, besides all the luxury shit they have, but some of the stuff they do is just fucking stupid. But the actual quickest way to release that clip in there is watch watching this hole. Watch what happens. No need to pry. Just go here. Pull. Look, the clip is up pull just need to pull up on that i guess maybe other people knew that i'm new to this crap just just need to go in there and pull pull up on that don't pull and try to break it see how much just pull that much and it's already released i did that with this first one here Anyway, yeah, you just reach in there with something like this and just pull up on that and then pull up on the switch and it'll, you know, wiggle it a little because these things, if you haven't taken them off in a while, the dirt and grime makes a nice suction and holds them on there. So you just got to make sure that releases. See the, see the clip down on there? When that pulls that way towards the window, it's not held on anymore. And then you just wiggle this back and forth and pull it up out. I have nothing to hold the camera to show me do that and that, but it's the same technique on all of those. Alright, so I went through, pulled up on the clip, and just, just go in there and pull with the clip, and then I use, while you're pulling up on the clip, I use this thing. I went in to the back and pulled up. Oops, sorry. I went in this. Well, pulling up on the clip, I went on this and just pulled up on those, and they all released. And as you see, you don't need to remove this. These get tight in there. They just push up into the sheath, and then they pull out and get out of your way. And this one also had a tiny bit of oil on it, but I already cleaned it off. Um, tiny bit of oil up on that top seal there. really not gonna film all these and yes you don't want dirt falling down into your cylinder um, there's a minimal amount of dirt I'm not gonna blow it I'm not gonna even bother touching anything there's not enough dirt to not likely to knock anything down there Let's keep this so it's not hitting stuff when you pull it out oh these threads are so long Oops. I see the rubber grommet pulls it up oh, with it. Now let's check this a little bit. I 
mean, that plug looks good, too. I mean, there is wear at the top. I Again, I don't know how many miles are on these plugs. I should have my bumper. Keep kicking it down there. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. I'm over to place that in the box also. See, the gap is smaller on these. Tiny bit smaller, so that, that those that metal is eating away on those. And with the rubber grommet in here, I just do this. Put it in, and we're seated. And then I could just easily shove it back down this hole. Ugh. Not really much to film. And these threads go on forever. I mean, this is this is really simple compared to a normal car where it's hard to get at the plugs because they're down the sides, you know. Um, all right, I guess I'm just gonna. Stop filming right about there, buddy. All right, so this spark plug I'm gonna have to blow air out of. Um, let's zoom this in. Unfortunately, I don't think I looked down the hole the last one I did. But, yeah. Uh, there's some stuff fell down in there, and that's a lot of stuff. I'm gonna have to blow that out. I'm going to use um, a can of air and just stick the, the tube down there. Uh, let's find it. All right, so I'm going to blow out that cylinder this method. This is a vacuum. This is an old vacuum line. It's, it's real hard. But anyway, a normal vacuum line would work. Over that tube, and then I'm going to stick this down the hole and blow like that blow to get that air out i don't feel like turning on the, the air pump just for some air i did this method also to get um filings out when i had to um do new threads for the stupid crown vix um spark plug issue where it's only got four threads holding the plug in so you blow plugs out and you have to you have to uh thread new threads in there and put a uh, heat the coil in there and then put your plug back in yeah it's annoying but it, it blew out the metal filings and it'll blow out that crap too so i'm gonna do that i'm not gonna videotape it no need to i only got one hand this tube's gonna go down the hole and then i'm gonna pull that trigger and it's gonna blow that shit up out of the hole because it ain't got no other place to go all right That was cool. <laughs> I guess I lied that I was going to videotape it. That was pretty fun watching that shit come out. All right, so another thing. When you're putting when you're putting these back in, make sure of course you match the clip with the clip, which means this goes in this way. Um, when you put that in there, I put that in right. That right, one's a little tight. Um, yeah, buddy. To get that in there and clipped, you definitely want one of these. Uh, what is this thing called? I don't know. But you go in, instead of removing it, you click it, and then uh, uh, push it down. And of course, this time it doesn't do it, right? All right? You push down, you usually 
very quick. There you go, it just clicked. Did you hear it pop? You got a pop noise. And then you gotta weasel these in. And well, maybe get those to click, I don't know, but this one I, I broke off. Yeah, my, my problem. That one I broke off and this front one isn't clicking in. Oh, it's clicked in now, oh, whatever. Um, all right, so it's definitely, you definitely want this tool. Because getting those to push down and, and pop in is a real pain in the ass. That one I broke, I was hitting it with the screwdriver. That's what I did with the previous one. Just tapped it with the screwdriver. But because these are so old, the plastic is brittle and it just snapped. I might buy that. That's just a little, that's just a little plastic cover on there. I might buy a new one or I might not. I really don't care. I don't think anything's going to happen. Um... So I got one more plug to go. All right, let's get that done. All right, so that's it. That's um, very simple to do on this car. Um, well, if you have that tool. Otherwise, I don't know what you're gonna do because you really need you really need this tool to pull them up to get them loose. But to put them back in, it's pretty critical. It's hard for those to pop in, and you don't want to push on that area because that's the coil. You want you don't want to break this plastic because the coil will start. You don't want to crack this. You don't want to crack that because yeah, you'll get sparks going, you know, in all wrong directions. That's sealing in that spark. Um, so you definitely want to use this tool to pull it up out and put it back in to get it to, to pop back in. I, I screwed up one of those, broke the plastic. Um, it looks like um, this plastic is can be replaced. At least uh, that's the plastic I broke. Or Yeah, the clip part. I broke. I completely broke the whole clip off and then I broke off a piece here. It should be fine because it's got a rubber O-ring sealing it in. Um, I'll see how much it costs, but I probably won't do anything about it. Uh, this puppy over here, still got these going. I do have the replacement cage in. Uh, this is the part I broke off. I do have the replacement cage in to replace all this, and I did find the parts. I happened to put them right <laughs> in the dashboard. <laughs> or I could have epoxied them back on and been good but i ordered the whole new plastic thing um but this isn't going anywhere that's that's sturdy so i'll replace that later on probably won't film it because before i already did that um so the first uh the first three were showing some oil leaking by on the seal the last three nothing those the last three were three the last three were clean except they had a lot of sediment down in the hole where i had to blow out especially the back two they had a lot of stuff in there um i don't know maybe because more stuff blows back to the engine but it was but still it's got to get by the coil i don't know how it got down in there um maybe when i pulled this up out it fell in possibly so i should have sprayed those and cleaned them before pulling those out but Whatevs. You can do that. It is probably a good idea to spray out all these areas to clean everything out and then pull those out. I didn't even look down in there. Because mostly all, all up here is all like oil based. Um, it's all oil and sedimented. It's all oiled down and doesn't move. But then again, I guess there's some oil leaking over here or something. Where back there it's all clean. So all that all the stuff that's wet here that doesn't move is probably dry back there. So... I guess your normal thing is you should spray out before you pull those out. I actually do it on my other car. Well, because it's more in your face. Here, it's... Uh, I need a chair to just get back there to look in, so it's a real pain in the ass. But, yeah, this is pretty simple to do spark plugs on. Now it's time to start the car. And also to note, after replacing that parking brake screw-up, that parking brake light switch... 
I haven't had any issues with this car since. Constantly charging over 14 volts. Every time I turn off the car, the battery's sitting at about 12 to 8. And then, of course, it drops because all the stuff's going on. But before, with that battery switch, battery, uh, with that, sorry, the, uh, the, 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 the brake light switch, for some reason, the battery would not charge. Or it wouldn't fully charge. Uh, the charging system would be at, uh, I think, 13 volts. You would turn the car off and it would be immediate. The battery would be sitting at 12.5. Um, I think 12.65 is normal, but now when you turn off the car, it's sitting at 12.8 and then it, it almost quickly drops down to 12.5 .5 because of all the lights and everything on. But still, huge difference. Haven't had any issues driving it. Stupid brake light. <laughs> A brake light switch should last 10 lifetimes of the car. That is crazy. So anyway, everything's been smooth, and I think I have to take a shit, so this is over with. Pretty easy. Simple, simple. You don't have to remove this. All right.